Before I get behind that microphone, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would just like to say a few things without that, because this is more personable. We've got a physician following two attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> um, if what I present were not so different, I would feel like an imposter, because um, this, is a, this is a personal story, um, which I'll explain in a minute. But I, want to, but I want to get this small, unmanned aerial vehicle in your view and out of sight so that you won't be thinking about it. And I'll explain it to you briefly, and if anybody wants to ask me more about it later, we can do that at supper tonight. <laughs> this is my cousin, Keith Gerdine, who um, is going to hold it. This is called a Phantom Three small unmanned aerial vehicle and they're called drones because they can fly out of sight and still be controlled. This is a controller. One antenna controls the flight of the vehicle. The other antenna controls Wi-Fi. And I haven't put it here but I put an iPad here. I have all the normal controls that a model airplane would have. Forward, backward, up and down but I can also do sideways and round and round. Um, with this, this has a GPS, compass, Wi-Fi, computer, carries a chip, its own camera, which I can control with my iPad as if I had a camera in my hand. That means f-stop, back and forth between JPEG and RAW, video, and still pictures. Is it for sale? <laughs> um, when it is flying, I see on my iPad what the camera sees. I also can switch to a satellite mode, and it will show me a satellite view of the Earth and a dot exactly where the drone is over the Earth. Um, if I get in trouble, I can mash this button, which says, come home. <laughs> It will automatically come home and land all by itself. But the first time I tried that, I discovered that there's a little range problem that it's got an accuracy range of about 10 feet and I landed in a tree the first time. <laughs> so this is my second generation one. You couldn't stop it before or now with this one. If it's in that mode, I can immediately take it out when it comes into view. Um, I have flown it as far as a mile away, photographing um, the uh, tail race canal in Munskana. Generally, I don't fly it more than about a thousand or two thousand feet away. But I do. I do. Um, my project is the history of Berkeley County from the air, and uh, Francis Marion. It's just an incidental thing that happened while I was photographing Wagoo Creek. Um, and I'm going to tell you more about that in a minute. I think um, we can put the drone up and move on. J.D., you want to do toy? J.D., yeah. you want to do toy? You're not going to fly around the room? <coughs> This particular model has been modified to fly indoors. I could fly it off, I could safely fly it around the room without injuring any of you. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what we What a what then? I'm really going to talk about a single day in the life of Francis Marion and his troops. But before I do, um, my family name that goes back associated with Francis Marion is Sinclair. They're also in this room, Godimes and DeBose. Are there any other names in this room that go back to the time of Francis Marion? Say so if there are. Richardson. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Any others? North Carolina, Lewis. Okay. South Carolina, Adair. Okay. Um, let us see if this. All right. Now, um, before you do the lights, I'm concerned that I'm the last speaker. And so if y'all would like to bring your chairs up close, I would feel like you're really into it because this is, uh, what I want to do is compliment the other speakers and that is, I want to give you a feeling of what it was like to be there. Because if I said this, this, and this, how are you going to form a picture in your mind? So I want to put those words with pictures. So if you want to come closer, come on right now. You can turn the lights down a little bit. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know who has ever been to the Wadbu Bridge? Who has ever been on Wadbu Creek? Who's ever been to Wadbu Plantation? Who? Okay, so I do have something to share that, that you haven't seen. I, was, I asked Carol and George, well, has anybody ever talked about Francis Marion's last campsite and last skirmish? And they said they didn't think so. Um, the other thing is, um, you're real historians. If, if I make uh, technical mistakes, I would like for you to be gentle with me. <laughs> this, this is more about visual and feeling uh, but I'm going to be reading from some real facts, and so um, I think it'll be accurate. <coughs> now, I don't know whether y'all can see this. Yeah. Yeah. George, I'm trying to find the little button that makes it um, point on the podium. On the podium. Which one point? <laughs> okay, I got it. Thank you, Karen. All right, so here we are in Marion. You got it? Here's Lake Marion, Lake Moosery. Here's Francis Marion's home site, Palm Bluff, and I'm going to show you a photograph of his home in a minute. Here's Lake Moosery, Village of Pineopolis, Pineopolis Dam, Wadbu Plantation is about in here. Marion's birthplace is about in here. In, in this place. The light won't go off. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to point it at your, in your eyes. I can't make it. George, <laughs> help me. It won't advance. Tinker Bell won't advance. <laughs> George, I can just tell you to advance. <laughs> That's pointed at the computer, don't you? <laughs> George, you can just advance it. only eight slides. So first there are going to be slides, and then a, a, a movie from the um, drone. But I wanted, to, I wanted to give you a little background before we go flying. Um, George, can you advance that and give me the pointer? What you're learning. 
irony is I seldom do this. <laughs> George, I want you to come up here and work this for me, please, so I can talk. Karen, thank you. trees in Lake Marion. And this is Walnut from Pond Bluff Plantation, home of Francis Marion. Go ahead, advance. Norman. You advance. Go ahead, and advance it, and you push on that button right there. Yeah. And there be a red light up there. Okay. I know you wonder how a drone, experienced drone pilot can't mash a button. <laughs> right. Um, we're going to jump ahead because I don't know if any of you all have ever been to Francis Marion's home site on the Cooper River. Um, and there's a marker. Uh, this is the road to Metkin Plantation. Uh, we don't know exactly where he was born, but it was at least See the Cooper River right here. Um, and the name of this plantation doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Goatfield. Uh, it's now called Brick House. Um, and he was born about 1930, 1732 at that spot. Go ahead, advance. Slide. So now we're coming from Manny all the way over to. Wide Hook Plantation, right here. Then we enlarge it a little bit. Here's Wide Hook Creek, Highway 402, Highway 41, and Highway 52. Monk Scorner is right here. Are you a little bit oriented? Yeah. All right, so I just want you to get a feel. This is Wide Hook Creek. Next. So here's the plantation site. Here's a home right here. There's a bridge right here that does not exist anymore. And um, we're going we're gonna to get to the point. No, I'll show, all right, so um, October 29, 1782, Major Frazier uh, attempted to surprise Marion. And normally you would just go straight here. So he took his troops, and I don't know if, it's, if this is the road he took, but by the description of the distance, this, this, there's no other road in this area. And as he gets to this point, he can go this way or this way if you look at, um, if you look at maps of the terrain where the water is. He could have gone two ways and crossed this bridge. So has anyone ever spoke about this before, or has anyone ever said they know exactly where Major Frazier went? Okay, um, Marion found out about it 
but he had already taken his horses to a place six miles away where there was food. Um, so he took his troops and lined them in the woods, hoping to surprise uh, Major Frazier. And uh, I want to read. I want to read. I'm going to read the account of that in just a minute. Next slide. So this is a um, Google map showing the same thing, which gives you. A, you see how much water is there even now. And so here's Major Frazier coming across the swamp um, to this site. Next. Here's another view. Uh, Major Frazier coming this way, an old bridge here, uh, battle site here. The house is no longer in existence, but some of the remnants are still there. And um, later there's a campsite here for Mary. Can y'all see this well? Yes. Yeah. Next. So um, this is taken by a paper, and I'm going to read from this paper written in 1980. Uh, Two, and you'll see this slide again. So the swamp is up here. Frazier's coming this way. Mary's men surprise him a little bit here. Frazier retreats and comes back. And eventually Marion has to give up some things before Frazier leaves. House site is here. Uh, Marion's campsite was here. And within the last year, the owner of the plantation leased this property and was um, running his tractor through there and ran into a foundation. Um, and uh, it, nothing has been done to uh, determine what this foundation is. Next. That, that, that may be the... Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, lights for a minute. Better now with them. Okay with the microphone? Yes. Yeah. The skirmish or battle of Wabu took place on August 29, 1782. Marion had been camped at the plantation the day before. William Dobine James describes the Wabu at that time. Quote, it had been abandoned by the owner who was attached to the enemy, the British. The mansion and two extensive ranges of Negro and other outhouses were left open for himself, Marion, and his man. He occupied the mansion and his man, the outhouses, on the west towards the bridge, remember I showed you a picture of the bridge, and on the back, the outhouses, to the east and directly in front of the dwelling, there stretched toward the road an extensive avenue of old cedar trees. They are no longer in existence the trimming of which had been neglected for some years, and their long boughs descend, descending towards the ground. Just prior to my, Marion's arrival, British General Leslie sent a foraging party to Muscona under Major Thomas Frazier. When Frazier arrived, he learned that Marion was camped at Wabu Plantation. To protect his foragers, Frazier decided to attack Marion with 100 cavalry and an unknown number of black dragoons. He moved upstream four miles. Remember I showed you that um, road he took around. He moved upstream four miles from the well-used Waibu Bridge to another bridge northeast of Waibu Plantation. Marion was warned of Fraser's arrival in the area, but was without cavalry support of his own, having sent them six miles away where forage was available. Needing intelligence on Frazier's maneuvers, Marion gathered his officers, officers into a patrol and had them move toward the bridge. That's the old bridge I showed you with, with the dots. Meanwhile, Marion arranged his men around the plantation house and along the cedars leading to the plantation house. On his left, he placed riflemen in some of the outhouses. The British crossed the upstream bridge, the one I showed you, and attacked Marion's mounted officers. The officers retreated towards the avenue across the open field, and the British followed. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be flying over that area, and you're actually gonna see from the air exactly what happened. Um, 
and the words I'm telling you now, um, you'll be able to you'll be able to picture everything that happened. As the British approached, they charged, and Marion's men loosed a volley at short range, throwing them back. For the next hour and a half, the British maneuvered in the fields around the plantation, attempting to draw Marion's infantry out into the open. Eventually, the British withdrew, taking with them a captured wagon of ammunition and baggage. And every one of these statements uh, is backed up by uh, a reference. James states Marion's men killed nine. Liscombe lists four killed, six wounded, one captured. In the battle, former loyalist Major Ganey, who had recently signed a treaty with Marion at Birch Hill, performed heroically for Marion. After the battle, Marion was left with only three rounds of ammunition per man, and he decided that it was safer to retreat to the St. Stephen area than remain at Wagoo. By September 24, he returned to Wadu and had twice as many men in camp as he had when Fraser attacked him. From this point until the British evacuated Charleston on December 14, 1782, Marion made Wadu his headquarters, but dispersed detachment, detachments widely to watch for any signs of the British coming out of Charleston. Marion's November 24 letter explaining his request to be relieved from going to Charleston was the last he wrote to Nathaniel Green. The British left Charleston on December 14, 1782. The following day, Marion dismissed the militia at Wagoo and went to his ruined Pond Bluff plantation. So now, um, dim the lights. Uh, uh, any questions before I go um, to the video? Okay. We have to select the video. Um, can you start video? Should start if you don't want to it. Wadu Creek. We're just going to enjoy flying up Wadu Creek just for the fun of it right now. Those are abandoned rice fields on the right and left. Am I blocking anybody's view? Yeah. certain that Mary would have gone up this creek in a boat like you're doing right now. How far are we from that now? What's your question? How far away are we from that dam? How far away from we? From what we're looking at. How high are we? The altitude. The altitude or? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, distance, mileage. Um, I'm trying to think how far it is from here to Wadu. Probably about 60 miles. No, it's less than that, about 40. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I, I've been confused. I was thinking Waibu, and 
Wad Boo. W-A-D-B-O-O, just outside of Muscon, entering the Cooper River. Okay, thank you. Near Stony Landing Plantation. I've been doing this for a year, and there's a very steep learning curve um, in everything I've done, including how to put the films together, how to attach music, and um, you'll see this is not perfect. I haven't been real smooth in some of my terms. This gives you a feel for what life was like, really like for Francis Marion. Are you following in a boat? I, I don't, I can't see it. I'm following it on my um, iPad. Oh, uh, yes, I am in a boat, but I'm not looking at the drone, I'm looking at my iPad. In a minute, you'll see the boat. I turned 80 when I started this and felt like I needed something to keep me younger. <laughs> now, Tom Marion, this would have been Evelyn Woody, correct? I can't hear you. At, at the time of Marion, this area would have been Evelyn Woody. It would not have been the, right. At the time of Marion, there would not have been this many rice fields. And you say at the time of marrying it would be heavy to wood. Look now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but this this is before the impoundment, right? This the, I'm in the um, pontoon boat you see ahead now. I decided I could be more smooth in my flying um, if the uh, drone were behind me uh, than in front of me. We'll be coming upon a bridge called Wadboo Bridge, which was a vital, uh, vital land connecting link in those days. But I hope seeing those trees from this altitude gives you an idea of what the land was really like back in Marion's time. That's the uh, Rembert C. Dennis boat landing you see uh, in the top, and Wadboo Bridge. What route number is that? What route number is that? The route that we're I looking at. The highway. the highway is yeah. Highway 402. getting close to Wadu Plantation. It's going to be right up in this area. There's a power line. I'm going to fly over it and then come back and fly under it just for the fun of it. <laughs> Without seeing it. It's a little hairy right here. 
I can't see the drone. I'm flying, flying on the computer. It's a beautiful boat on kayak trip. If you ever have the opportunity to take it, do so. small cave coming up and the local um, legend is that um, Marin used it as an escape from a whale but there's nothing to document it. The rumor that bootleggers used it to hide their liquor is more likely. This, cave, this little cave. coming this way across the woods. So you've seen this before. Frazier's coming from this direction. The battle is here. This has been excavated and the uh, busted up Musket balls are here, and the round musket balls that have never been damaged are here, so that's how they identify the campsite and the battle site. So now we're coming from the creek, battle site here, home here, campsite here. Mansion is right here. Campsite right here. Now we're flying again. Somebody speak louder. Is, is there anything left of the road they drive now? Nothing is left. Nothing is left of Fraser's route. So the skirmish battle is going to occur right in here. Home site right there. Stop it. Can you, can you stop the video? Okay. Um, I, I, I thought if we took a couple questions before it ended, you would have a better idea of uh, what I say. Question? Yeah, the question was which way was the cedar, um, not highway, was it? Road. Yeah, the cedar, cedar line. Where road. was the cedar road? Where was it? Which way was it? The question is, where was the Cedar Road? And I have to admit, I have no idea, and there's nothing in the description that uh, helps me, but logically, the Cedar Road, okay, here's the house site, the road that takes you back to the highway is here, so the Cedar Road should be right here. Is that, okay? Um, so now we, are at the mansion site here, the campsite here, uh, the creek is here, and Fraser is coming from this direction. 
um, going this way. All right, go ahead. We're close to the end.